Oh. Hello guys. Say. Can anyone tell me? What is a negotiable instrument? Yes. A negotiable instrument is a contract. I am sorry, and I hate to disagree. But, actually, a negotiable instrument is a pig. Boing coin. You are both so funny. And I don't want to come off like I know everything. But really, a negotiable instrument is a toaster. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> well, we have quite a variety of opinions. It reminds me about a story where three blind men place their hands on an elephant. Based on what they feel, each describes a different object. Let's start with you, Alan. You say a negotiable instrument is a contract. Can you tell me why you feel this way? Certainly. When two people enter into a contract, either of them can assign their benefits to someone else. Simply tell the person who is to deliver on the contract. That is to deliver to the person you assigned your contract rights to. Wow. You make a good point, Alan. A promise or a note, then, is like a contract assignment. Exactly. If someone gives me a promissory note, they promise to pay me money. Let's say, I want my dear mother to get paid the money. I simply assign the rights I had in the promissory note, to mother. Just like it works with a contract. Good point, Alan. You might be onto something. How about you, McDonald? You say a negotiable instrument is a pig. How is that? That's easy. If I have a pig, and I want to give it to someone, I just hand it over and say, Here. It's yours. And. It then belongs to the other person. Wow. You raise a good point. When we assigned benefits in a contract, we never had to actually transfer anything material. But what you're saying, as with a pig, is that we have to hand over the thing in order to complete a transfer. Yes. Yes. You gotta have the pig. No pig, no bacon. If I don't have the promissory note, I don't get paid. How about you, Darla? Why do you say the negotiable instrument is a toaster? That seems a bit odd. Doesn't it? I mean, a toaster. Come on. It's no stranger than saying a negotiable instrument is a pig like Mr. McDonald does. You make a good point. Please, go on. Okay, let's say I have a toaster and I give it to some girl. Well, she puts in some bread and it doesn't work. No toast. She gets all huffy, but so, what, who cares? Okay this time, I am selling stuff at a street sale. I sell someone the toaster for lots of money. I don't say anything like, you are assuming all the risk, or you are taking it as is. Well, the buyer returns to my street sale, and she demands I give her her money back. I look her right in the eye and say whatever. Why should I? And what did she say back to you? She said, the thing you sold me was not what it purported to be. Since it was a toaster, there an implied warranty that it would function like one. And toast bread. Okay. You are saying that a negotiable instrument that is sold or given to someone else for value must be genuine and do what is expected of it. Just like any other sale. Otherwise it would be a defective sale. Yeah, people shouldn't pay money for something and get cheated, right? Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just one thing. If I sell you the toaster and it doesn't work and you sell it to someone else, that person cannot come to me and demand their money back. Okay. I see why that would be. I mean, it's not like you sold the toaster to that person. For sure. Just like with a toaster sold at a street sale. Your assurances only extend to the person you sell it to. That's right. Yes. Or, should I say, correct, Amundo. Now, let's say, someone takes the promise or a note from the maker. And then sells it to someone else. Okay. Are there any watches of sale? Like there was with the toaster sold at the street sale. Yes. That's what I'm saying. When I make, or sell, a promissory note, I am saying, that it is genuine, and, that it will meet the buyer's expectations. Just like the toaster I sold at the street sale, 
It has to live up to expectations. I see. And, if there is a problem with it, let's say the maker of the promissory note refuses to pay. Well, then, I am responsible to pay. That's because, since I transferred the note, it carried with our called transfer warranties to my buyer, just like when I transferred the toaster to the buyer at the garage sale. Splendid. Anything else you would like to add? What was that? Don't mind him, he is just chasing some pig. There is one more thing. Yeah. What's that? Oh, nothing bad. Just that, if the person I sell the promissory note to, then sells it to someone else, the buyer of it cannot make me pay. When the maker of the note refuses to honor it. Oh, really? You're off the hook? Yes, that is, unless I sign it. If I endorse it by signing it, I am telling everyone else who buys it that I will stand behind it. Not just the person I dealt with. Very cool. That's because, if I sign a note, I have endorsed it. I am telling everyone who gets the note after me that I will pay the note, if the maker refuses to honor it. Yes. That's very very clever. Okay. That makes sense. I have one more question. Sure. What is that? What if the note itself is no good? Let's say it was forged, or illegal, or made under duress. Oh, you mean, a defense, that would get the maker, off the hook? Yes, a universal defense. Would that, excuse an endorser, from having to pay? I am afraid, not. The endorser's signature, says, this note is, good. However, if I did have to pay someone, because the maker didn't honor the note, I could collect from the person who sold it to me. You see, their signature made certain guarantees that the note, to me, the person in the rescuist position would be the person who dealt directly with the maker. Is that fair? Well, as fair as you can get in an imperfect world. Since the person dealing with the maker is best able to assess if something is screwy. So, there we have it. Negotiable instruments are three legal concepts. All married together to encourage trade and to protect innocent buyers. They include contract assignments, physical transfers of something, like McDonald's pig, and warranties of sale. Each of these contributes to the humongous elephant we now call negotiable instruments. Bye-bye.